everyone, I thought today I would do a video about rescuing animals. Now as you'll all know if you've seen my videos I do advocate rescuing rather than buying them from a pet shop but I thought I'd just go into why and address some of the common misconceptions around adopting. Now this isn't going to be a video to slate breeders or pet shops but just to make people aware that there are thousands and thousands of animals waiting for a new home in rescues all over the country and yeah, I thought I'd just go over adoption, the adoption process, and go over some of the frequently asked questions about adopting. So one of the main reasons I see that people go to pet shops for animals is that they want a baby animal. So you want to watch them grow up, you want to tame them from a, from a baby, and you want to, you know, spend that time with them. And a, a lot of people seem to think that the only animals in rescues are going to be older, and this is definitely not the case. Um, rescues house animals of all ages, right from babies to the elderly. So a lot of animals will come into rescues pregnant, especially from sort of hoarder situations or sometimes there's just unwanted pregnancies, especially with sort of small animals like guinea pigs and rabbits. They will be um, housed together. A lot of pet shops accidentally sell you the wrong gender so then you'll think you'll have two girls living together but you actually have a girl and a boy and you'll end up with a litter. So a lot of these will end up at rescues because people aren't really banking on having that many animals and they just can't cope with them. So you know a lot of circumstances arise as well for families at any time meaning they need to find a new home for their pet. Sometimes they'll bring home an animal and then if they're renting a property they, they're not allowed to have it so that that one will end up in a rescue potentially. So this definitely isn't the case. You can find really young animals in rescues as well as old animals. So a lot of the time I mention rescuing and people will say, how do I find a rescue or an unwanted animal? So you can always go on Google or another search engine and just search animal rescue or animal shelter in and then the town where you live. You can also ask around at your vets or join an animal forum so if you wanted to bring home a rabbit you could join a rabbit forum and you can ask if anyone's located near you. You can also use rehoming websites which are set up for rehoming animals. For guinea pigs there's guineapigrehome.org for example or with tortoises there's tortoise trust there's there's so many websites out there. Um, you can also look on websites such as Gumtree or Preloved which um, people use to rehome their animals. Sometimes, you know, they'll be in the newspaper or community boards and shops. Um, you can also keep an eye out on Facebook for Facebook friends that might be rehoming a pet. So there's so many different avenues you can take for finding your pet. This will vary depending on where you live and, you know, but there is a lot of ways to find one. So a lot of people also think that there must be a reason that that animal was given up there could be something wrong with them, they could all have behavioural problems and again this is absolutely not the case. There's so many circumstantial changes that can cause a family to make the difficult decision to rehome their pet. It could be a change in job, move house, you know a new baby on the way which means they don't have the time to care for them. None of which is the pet's fault. Not all pets and rescues have been abused or aggressive. They may have come from loving homes just where the circumstances have changed and you know there's unforeseen circumstances all the time that can cause people to rehome their animals. So the rescue will most of the time be able to tell you um, you know where the animals come from and their personality a lot more than sort of a pet shop will do because pet shops generally have such a high turnover of animals they don't know the individual personalities of the animals and they don't have the time to sit getting to know them whereas rescues it's solely their job to find these animals new homes and they'll really want to give you the animal that fits in with your lifestyle the best so well to prevent them coming back to a rescue again so a lot of the time they will be able to find you the perfect animal and the one that will fit in with your lifestyle best and what you want in your pet so another common misconception is that they will have medical issues so Rescues always vet check the animals that they rehome, unlike pet shops who again have such a high turnover of animals they can't spend the time vet checking every single animal. So this means that you're actually more likely to bring home a healthy animal from a rescue and they'll also make sure that they've got all their vaccinations, their neuters and microchips where necessary, so with bigger animals like cats, dogs and rabbits. 
and you can also find already bonded pairs which means saving a lot of money and time bonding especially in, in bigger animals like rabbits can be an absolute nightmare I'm sure if you know if you've been following my channel for a while you'll know that I'm struggling with bonding my two girls so getting an already bonded pair will mean a lot less stress for you so another reason is that people don't know where they came from so what environment they came from their breeding history all of that sort of thing puts a lot of people off going to a rescue but if you think about it the animals in a pet shop where have they come from they've come from somewhere do you really know where they've come from and the conditions they were bred in so some pet shops do only receive animals from suitable breeders and really do care about the welfare of their animals but sadly some of the pet shops especially the bigger ones don't and they're obviously in business to make a profit because otherwise they wouldn't be going so you never know where they've come from and unfortunately some animals are bred in rodent mills and can come from horrendous conditions i'm not slating all pet shops by all means but there is issues with some and some pet shop staff also miss sex animals so often females are sold as pregnant and you know, I know the animals in pet shops deserve homes too, however the money that you spend on buying a pet from a pet shop will go back into buying more and the cycle will continue, whereas if you're rehoming an animal, your the money that you donate is supporting the rescue and the work that they do. So it's about choosing where to spend your money as well and what your money will be used for. So on the flip side, if you're looking to rehome your pet because you've no longer got the time for them, then what can you do? So as much as I believe that when you bring a pet home you're committed to care for them for the rest of their lives, I do acknowledge of course that sometimes unforeseen circumstances emerge which means that you can't give your pets the attention or the material things that they require. So when this occurs it's down to you as the responsible pet owner to think about the best thing for your pet. So this can be really really hard because obviously we all love our animals but sometimes we can't give them the best things which does mean that it might be the best thing for them to surrender them to a no-kill shelter or you can yourself find them a suitable loving home so this is again really hard but sometimes you know it is the kindest thing to let them to go to a home where they'll receive more attention or more space or whatever that might be so if you do decide that you do need to do this for your pet, then never advertise them for free. Now, I see a lot of these adverts on Gumtree and Preloved, free rabbit to a good home. But if you really want to make sure that they go to a good home, you need to ask for a reasonable amount of money so you know that they're committed to caring for them. Because if they're not prepared to pay a one-off cost to bring them into their house, how do you know that they're going to be prepared to pay for vet bills and any things that they'll need. So another reason why it's really 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 good idea to ask for a bit of money is because some rodents, especially sort of guinea pigs, um, rats and mice, they can end up as snake food. If you're advertising your small animal as free, I mean some people could see that as free food for their snake. So please please make sure that this person is right to look after your pet and if you can't find anyone take them to a rescue and they can find that home for them most rescues do sort of house checks and they'll really make sure that that person is the right person so a lot of what puts people off adoption is because they think that the adoption process is much more complicated than buying from a breeder or a pet shop now this is the case because the rescue will want to make sure that the animal you're bringing home is right for you but as long as you've done your research and you've got suitable accommodation set up, the process won't be a problem. And you should always have suitable accommodation set up before you bring home an animal anyway and have done the right research to know that they're going to fit in with your lifestyle and you can meet all their requirements. So the rescue needs to make sure you're committed to buying this animal so you don't just buy them on a whim. Again, this is to break the cycle of animals being surrendered and it shows that they really care about where that animal's going and that they're going to the best home that they possibly can. So another reason why people are put off is that the adoption fees are can be more expensive than buying an animal from a pet shop. So this is usually the case, but with any vaccinations, neuters, microchips, 
health issues, they'll all be sorted out beforehand so it'll actually save you money in the long term, especially with bunnies which you can probably buy for, I'm not sure how much bunnies are, £20 and then if you adopted one maybe it would be £50 but if you've got to go and get that rabbit neutered that's another 60 to to £100 as a rough estimate and then the vaccinations which are £30, £50 each every year this is very vague but you can see it quickly adds up with buying an animal from a pet shop if you've got to take care of all those things yourself and again with animals such as guinea pigs and rabbits they'll usually already be bonded in pairs or groups and this is of course isn't the case with pet shops where you just pick two from the litter and just hope that they get on when they get home and when they reach sexual maturity and they start to re-establish a dominance and hierarchy then that can be an issue so the fees are there for a few reasons one is again to make sure that you're serious about taking on the commitment and you're not buying them on a whim um, if a potential owner can't afford the adoption fee they're not going to be able to afford housing, food, vet bills. So that's the main reason. Another reason is to help cover the veterinary care and the expenses of the animals. So rescues house a lot of animals which all need food and housing and they'll need vaccinations and any time they get sick they'll need to see the vet. And somehow they've got to pay for all this and your fees help towards this. And another reason is to, of course, stop rodents becoming food for reptiles. So going over the adoption process, you'll probably be asked a few questions. So they'll ask you if you work, um, which is to make sure that you're financially able to care for them again. If you have any other pets, for example, if you had a dog bringing home a rabbit, there would be more considerations. Also, if they've been neutered to prevent breeding, they'll ask you who your vet is as well, so they know that they will get vet care if they become ill. So they'll probably say, you know, they'll want you to register your animal with a vet as soon as you get them so that they know that, you know, you can provide that vet care. And also any future plans so they know that basically they won't be rehomed in a couple of months. So please bear in mind that there is a good reason they need to know the answers to these questions. It can sound a bit um, personal, but they're dedicated to finding them a forever home and they need to know that they'll be well loved and cared for. So if you need any more convincing on why to adopt animals, I grabbed some statistics off the internet and they said that in 2010 the RSPCA rescued or seized over 130,000 animals and in 2012 this rose to over 194. And this is only statistics from one organisation in one country, not including those that are rehomed on Facebook, Gumtree, Preloved, newspapers or in any other rescues. And it also shows how this problem is growing every year. So another rescue, the Rabbit Welfare Association, estimates that around 35,000 rabbits are surrendered to rescue centres each year in the UK alone. And that's only rabbits. So as you can see, this is a massive, massive problem. So if you are thinking of bringing an animal home and into your life, please, please, please consider giving one of these animals a home rather than supporting the breeding of more animals by buying from a pet shop. So of course this doesn't make you a bad person if you have bought your pets from a pet shop. I didn't realise when I first started with small animals that you could get small animals in rescues. I presumed it was just for cats and dogs, didn't really know much about it. And Gizmo and Jafar, who were my first ever guinea pigs, are from a pet shop. It's only, you know, in the last few years that I've recognised that you know, there are so many animals that do need adopting and need loving homes. And it's only then that I started adopting. So, of course, it doesn't make you a bad person. But that's why I'm making these videos to try and raise awareness about rescues. And why, you know, I choose rescuing over buying from a pet shop now. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this cleared up a couple of the commonly asked questions that I get on my channel every day. And... I hope this helped you so please remember if you're thinking about bringing an animal home to adopt and not shop thank you for watching i'll see you guys soon bye so i thought i would chuck in some statistics some st nope some statistics so i thought i would chuck in some st statistics damn it so i thought i would chuck in some statistics that Blah.